Good evening. We're going to call this meeting to order. It is now 6.38 on June 20th, 2023. And this is a public meeting of the City of Portland's Accountability Commission Subcommittee on Broader Systems. If the Spanish language interpretation, interpreters, Liz and Carolina, can please give us the information in Spanish interpretation. Buenas noches. Esta reunión es una reunión pública sujeta a la ley del estado de Oregon y a las normas administrativas de la ciudad de Portland y será grabada. Dispondremos de interpretación al español para esta reunión. Al acceder a la interpretación en español, verá la señal del video de los oradores, pero la señal de audio será sustituida por la del intérprete. Para acceder a esta interpretación, haga clic en el icono la parte inferior de su pantalla que dice interpretación. Y seleccione el idioma español. Gracias. Thank you. The city also has ASL interpretation, which is being provided by Katie and Kevin. Please pin their video feed to see their interpretations throughout the meeting. The closed captioning is turned on in Zoom as another means of assistance. Please note that this is an automatic captioning service and it will not always be accurate. The city supports access to meetings of the Police Accountability Commission and can provide other language, other language support as well. Please email in advance of future public meetings, either as a response to public meetings notice or directly to police accountability at Portland or to ask for other access assistance, including interpretation and other languages. This meeting is a public meeting and is subject to Portland, excuse me, subject to City of Portland's Administrative Code and Oregon State Law and is being recorded. For this meeting, the chat function is enabled for commission members to communicate with each other. Members of the public will be able to ask questions using the Zoom's Q&A feature. As commissioners are presenting and discussing things, if attendees have questions, please feel free to submit them through the Q&A. We hope to use this feature to help guide our conversations during the meeting and future, and future meeting agenda topics. We like to be clear that not all questions will be answered during the meeting, but if answered, both the question and the answer will be visible to you and will become part of the meeting record. To access this feature, just click on the Q&A feature in the middle of your screen. I'll now turn it over to co-chair KC for the land acknowledgement. Thank you very much. Um, the land acknowledgement that I will be using today was provided to us by the BIPOC caucus of the Oregon legislature. Indigenous tribes and bands have been with the lands that we inhabit today throughout Oregon and the Northwest since time immemorial and continue to be a vibrant part of Oregon today. We would like to express our respect to the first peoples of this land, the nine federally recognized tribes of Oregon, Burns Paiute Tribe, Confederated Tribes of Coos, Lower Umpqua, and Siuslaw Indians, Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde, Confederated Tribes of Siletz Indians, Confederated Tribes of the Umatilla Indian Reservation, Confederated Tribes of the Warm Springs Reservation, Coquille Indian Tribe, Cow Creek Band of the Umpqua Tribe of Indians and the Klamath Tribes. It is important that we recognize and honor the ongoing legal and spiritual relationship between the land, plants, animals, and people indigenous to this place we now call Oregon. The interconnectedness of the people, the land, and the natural environment cannot be overstated. The health of one is necessary for the health of all. We recognize the pre-existing and continued sovereignty of the nine federally recognized tribes who have ties to this place and thank them for continuing to share their traditional ecological knowledge and perspective on how we might care for one another and the land so that it can care for us. We commit to engaging in a respectful and successful partnership as stewards of these lands. We live in a nation of wealth created by the subjugation and exploitation of African people brought to Turtle Island through chattel slavery. We ground our fight in knowing that there is no black liberation without indigenous sovereignty and there is no indigenous sovereignty without black liberation. We fight for land back and reparations and refute settler colonialism, anti-black racism and imperialism. We invite you to join us in acknowledging all of this as our shared responsibility to make good use of this time and for each of us to consider our roles in reconciliation, decolonization and allyship. Thank you.
Thank you, Commissioner Casey. Can you please have the community agreements. So please take a moment to read these community agreements. There'll be three pages of them. Next one, please. Next slide. Next slide, please. If you notice that a conversation is coming to violating, close to violating a community agreement, please call your fellow commissioner members in gently and with compassion. If you are called in, please take a moment to consider how best to participate in the space while still respecting the community agreements and making space for everyone. Do we all commit to following the community agreements for today's meeting and gently calling in collaborator, colleagues and collaborators if needed? Okay, I see everybody, wonderful, thank you. I will now pass it back over to co-chair KC to discuss the timeline. You're muted. Commissioner Casey, you're muted there. Sorry, I was trying to make there be as little background noise as possible, but <laughs> I made you know me noise as well. Um, so uh, the Police Accountability Commission has split its work into six phases. We are now in the fifth phase of work, the transition plan and broader system. The commission will work until the end of August 2023 and will present its proposals to the city council for their consideration and approval after it finishes meeting. So are we on slide eight? Yep. This slide shows the outcome documents for the transition plan and broader system phase based on the agenda and scope approved by the commission. Now that the PAC has developed a rough draft of what the new accountability and oversight system will look like, the PAC will in this phase develop a transition plan for how to get from here to there, an understanding of how the process of implementing the new system will change or interact with other police oversight systems and levels of government, and also will name the new oversight board and bureau. Our subcommittee is focused on the second item, developing draft areas of agreement on broader system. Slide nine. This slide is the current project plan for the transition plan and broader system phase of Police Accountability Commission's work. This slide is for members of the public to be able to understand how the commission gets from now through the end of the phase. Today's meeting falls into the gold boxes with the purple border located in the lower middle portion of the screen. Slide 10. Following today, here are the upcoming meetings of the PAC. We would like to highlight that the subcommittee on broader system will hopefully finish its work tonight. If needed, there is an extra subcommittee meeting slot next Tuesday, June 27th from 6.30 to 9 p.m. There is a community information system on Tuesday, June 27th from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. over Zoom. This is a great opportunity for community members to get a broad overview of the PAC's draft for a new system and give input to help the PAC revise and update it. And the next full commission meeting of the PAC will be Thursday, June 29th. All right, slide 11. Today we're going to be discussing the updated draft of the areas of agreement on broader system, which is the document that we discussed in its initial form last week at our last meeting, um, starting with an overview of documents updated by the co-chairs. During the last meeting, most of the document, which is all but three sections, were reviewed in full. Those last three sections were discussed, some items were flagged for further discussion, and other parts were changed. Subsequently, some updates have been made to those sections as well. So today we're going to do a quick pass through the sections discussed and make sure to resolve any small changes. We're then going to spend the bulk of our time on the remaining three sections. 
This document has been reviewed once before, so it is possible to refer the document today, which would be ideal for the overall timeline of this phase of work. Any decision to refer a document to the full commission includes public comment and a review of the values and goals. All right, so I think we're ready to start walking through the document at this yeah, point. Yes, sorry, I was muted. <laughs> okay. Uh, here we go. So last time we walked through this document, um, most of these sections uh, did not receive any sort of feedback from the subcommittee members and we didn't get any indication that they were not supported. However, there are three sections that are not finished. The first was on the relationship with the State Employee Relations Board, where there's new text proposed from the drafting group for today's meeting. The second was section A3, which is the impact to city staff entities from the oversight board's implementation, where the subcommittee seemed close to a consensus, but there were questions needing to be answered, many of which we have answered in the week that passed between the last meeting and today. So hopefully we can work through that text together today for that subsection. And then the final section that we need to review is section A2 on impact to other advisory groups from the implementation of Charter 210 and this new system the PAC is creating. This was not a consensus position within the subcommittee and that was discussed during the last meeting. We also heard feedback from several volunteers on some of the other advisory groups. Um, so to focus in particularly on section A2, which is going to be the last one we get to today before we go through the introduction and then eventually um, approve the uh, entire document, hopefully. Um, but this was the section that sort of came up um, significantly at the last meeting. Um, we did uh, have luckily an opportunity for input on um, our proposals and our ideas around uh, how the uh, board is going to interact with um, the existing volunteer groups within uh, the city. And we appreciated people coming out and giving their feedback about that, including how to include those groups in the process of discussion um, and how to make sure that they had an ability to sort of influence whatever impact was going to be had in the on the creation of this board and on how it was going to interact with these groups. Um, so what we wanted to do um, is uh, bring sort of a new proposal based on that input and based largely on um, some input that we received from commissioners Iona and Handelman um, regarding uh, concerns around sort of biting off a little bit more than we can chew at the beginning of this group. And instead of trying to sort of mandate at this point um, any sort of combination of the uh, advisory group and uh, any of the existing or uh, the oversight board and any of the existing advisory groups. Um, instead, what we want to do is create a process by which um, if any of those groups end up deciding that uh, it makes sense for them to come under sort of the ambit of the oversight board, uh, there will be a process in place for that to happen. Um, so to be clear, we're not we're not getting to that section right now, but just to sort of be clear on what the new proposal will entail. Um, in the current draft, there will be no changes to any current advisory group other than the ones that have already been outlined as being changed by um, either city council or the implementation of this code. Um, so that includes the citizen review committee, which I think everyone understood was going to be phased out as part of this oversight board being created. Um, other advisory groups will have the ability to decide independently and voluntarily to join forces or incorporate with the oversight board uh, if they choose to. And the oversight board will wait at least three years, which is the full term length of the board, before reviewing advisory groups and making any recommendations of its own about how they could potentially uh, be incorporated or work in tandem with the oversight board. 
um, we kept a lot of the parts from Commissioner Debbie's proposal um, about having those groups in the meantime work closely with each other and have other options for partnership so that they can combine their resources and be able to work together on issues that affect both of them. Um, so we hope that this addresses a lot of the concerns that we've received around this proposal, um, while also giving the advisory groups and the board and the city the flexibility to be able to incorporate um, the incorporate in a way that feels productive and feels um, the most effective for all of the people who are involved in that process. Um, I look forward to hearing more feedback on that issue. Um, and I'm happy to get to it later, but for the time being, uh, we're going to jump into our draft areas of agreement and we will work, um, work our way to all of those uh, more, uh, those sections that require a bit more discussion before they'll be finalized. Thank you, Commissioner Casey. We will now move to the discussion. We'll move, we will now move to discussing the draft areas of agreement and broader systems. And we walk through the outline document and some other resources if needed. We're going to quickly review this part. The co-chairs mentioned no issues at this time and make sure and make sure that there is consensus. Then move on to the three sections co-chairs mentioned in order. After completing this pass, we'll move into a potential referring, referring the document to the full commission. Oh, staff? I can wait till after you do the discussion rules. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, we will ask you to follow normal discussion rules. Please be brief each time you speak. Even though you can speak multiple times, please be facilitated. Remember, I'll be using a weighted stack. Um, finally, please be forward looking with your comments. Um, and then staff, you said you uh, would like to speak. Yeah, I uh, just wanted to flag that um, at co-chair's request, we're moving up the values and goals review. Yes, um, that's right. So um, normally the review of the values and goals is something that takes place at the end of the discussion prior to um, the approval of the document, or in this case, because it's a subcommittee, the referral of the document to the full commission. So, um, but, but uh, yeah, discussing that earlier, uh, this time by design to try and allow for um, that to be a part of the considerations that subcommittee members make throughout this meeting. So um, the values and goals have uh, four pages. This is sort of the introductory page. Um, <clears throat> and these are essentially benchmarks that the commission set for itself um, in last March, 2022. So we'll scroll through briefly. The first section is introductory. After that, there is a table where there's values, corresponding goals, and then considerations or success criteria that relate to each. So just uh, I'll scroll through all of that and then um, have that be something that, that you can ask questions about or, or talk about. And if there are none or when those are done, we move back to the document if that works for Co-Chair Casey and facilitators. You. Absolutely. Yes. You can go to the next slide, I believe. Yeah, thank you.
And we can scroll up more, I believe. Is there another page or is that the end of the document? That is the end of the document. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I will move it to uh, the discussion. Um, I'm going to start off with uh, co chairs wanting to frame the discussion. So I think we are starting at the bottom and working our way up at this point um, to get through the things that we had already reached consensus on and uh, get to the things that we are in need further discussion. Am I incorrect about that, staff? Yes, and for those sections that um, have already been discussed, uh, they don't necessarily need to be read into the record again if there's no changes, so. Just walk through them. Certainly. So section E, relationship with other oversight entities. Um, do any commissioners have any changes that they would like to recommend to this section or are people ready to approve this? Commissioner Iona? We just have like three minutes to read it before we decide. I mean, to ourselves. Is that okay? Absolutely. All right, thank you. I will be looking for eyes or hands letting me know that they're ready. Thank you. Uh, can we move on? Okay. Uh, was okay. Yep, move on. Section D, relationship with federal government. Show of hands that you're done. Okay. And can we move on to this sec from this section? Okay. We're skipping three, uh, uh, skip and C till right. Yeah, perfect. Relationships with state government. And we'll read through one C through three C or C3, sorry. <laughs>
can we move on from this section? Okay. All right, we're going to C4, and this one we will need, this one's new, so we will need consensus. Um, can you please read it into the record? Certainly. Um, so this was an issue that we'd wanted to return to after our last meeting, um, which is how this uh, oversight board will re interact with the Employment Relations Board. Um, so C4, Employment Relations Board. The Oversight Board and Bureau shall maintain a working relationship with the State Employment Relations Board, or ERB. This relationship will be beneficial to the board understanding arbitration and its role in the process of addressing allegations of officer misconduct. Is there any strong opposition to the change, or excuse me, strong opposition to the text as it is? Okay. Is there general agreement to the text that as is? Can we move on? Thank you. So the only change to this section, which is a typographical change, is the C4 to C5, just the renumbering there. And yeah. then you'll see also that the, the, the section above was a replacement for this placeholder text. So that's not part of this, but yeah. If everyone has read this section, can we move on? Okay, great. Okay. Let's move on. There is a track change here. Oh no, I always get confused when it's on the sides. Has everyone finished reading? Can we move on from this section? Okay. Um, I'm just wanting to make sure that I'm seeing Tirsa, Commissioner Tirsa, and Commissioner Glenn's hands as well. Thank you. Okay. Skipping B. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we looked at the first half of B2 along with B1, and um, just because of the page break, it's hard to show it all. So this is all of B2, B2. together. Yeah. Thank you. And just to respond to Commissioner Handelman's question in the Q&A, um, I'm happy to do that. We are currently on section B2, which is the section relating to the relationship with the district attorney.
Is the commission ready to have finished reading? Okay, thank you. Um, can we move on from this section? Okay, thank you. Section B3. And B3 is the exchange of information with slash about other law enforcement agencies. And then we're also doing B4, which is other county relationships. Commissioner Debbie. So I have a question. Is the reason we're talking about a sheriff's in here is because this relates to the county? I'm just kind of curious why. I mean, I'm assuming there are some municipal police departments. Uh, I don't know this for, to, in Washington and Clackamas County. I don't know that for sure, but I, I'm just curious about that. Thank you. Any response to Commissioner Ayana's question? So I don't think that the if, if there are joint operations between the city of Portland and some other municipality, um, I don't think that we're precluding the board from attempting to do some sort of work with them. Um, I think the reason why we've specifically called out the county law enforcement entities is that city of Portland exists within the three of these counties. And so um, any city of Portland law enforcement will sort of uh, by necessity uh, be occurring in one of these three counties under the jurisdiction of one of these three law enforcement. Whereas I don't think that there is any, um, that there will certainly be municipalities like the city of Gresham that will be potentially interacting more often with the city of Portland. But since the Portland Police Bureau is the one that's sort of under this ambit and the city of Portland doesn't overlap with any other cities. I think that's why the focus here is on sort of jurisdictions that Portland does overlap with. That makes sense. Thank you for explaining it. Has everyone read this section? And are there any other comments or questions for this section? Okay, can we move on? from this section. Okay. Thank you. Let's move on. A3, no? Yes. Okay. So this is our first section that we're going to be addressing changes in. Um, so I think that we're just going to do what we have done previously and go through the section um, and then give um, members opportunity to comment both on the changes and on sort of anything else that they would like to see included here. Um, so this um, section focuses on the impact of the oversight board implementation on city staff entities. Um, the first section is focusing on the Portland Police Bureau Infernal Internal Affairs Division. Um, so the Oversight Board will investigate most complaint types which currently are handled by PPB Internal Affairs. The only complaint types which currently go to PPB Internal Affairs that would not go to the Oversight Board are complaints filed by officers about conduct not affecting any community member or the complainant officer does not choose to have the board investigate. For these cases, this work shall be transferred to Bureau of Human Resources or equivalent agency within city government, but outside of both PPB and the Oversight Board. Internal affairs shall sunset following the creation of the board and conclusion of its work addressing complaints received prior to the Oversight Board's full implementation. So we don't have any changes proposed there, but we have had some research that was done by our staff and by the city attorney's office in the interim. Um, and so if staff would like to sort of present that information um, this is an opportunity to sort of get get the sense of what the current um, law is to our understanding um, behind this proposal. Thank you, Commissioner Casey. Um, staff? 
Um, so first, thank you to uh, to the community members who, who reached out and, and others as well about this and, and asked questions. Um, it definitely led to uh, searching and, and learning more um, by members and, and by staff alike. Um, the question was uh, around the Portland Police Bureau's Directive 333, which is uh, technically not law, it's, it's um, policy um, that, that uh, governs how the Police Bureau operates. And um, I'll also clarify here that the uh, legal counsel that, that weighed in on this was not actually the city attorney's office, but rather the city, the PAC's outside legal counsel. Um, so just, just clarifying that. Um, and interpreted 333 as uh, saying that, that internal affairs currently does not handle criminal complaints, but handles administrative complaints related to incidents that may also be investigated criminally. And there's a lot of particular uh, rules in there about how internal affairs must behave to um, ensure the, the integrity of the potential criminal investigation but that that's led by the, the, the detective division and the uh, assistant chief of investigations. So um, there was something, and then that was confirmed as well by, um, by IPR um, in the conversation. So um, just wanted to flag that that was something that was looked into um, and, and uh, more details were sent out from um, to, to the members from the, uh, the attorneys there. And so um, does that answer the question, Co-Chair Casey? It certainly clears up my um, confusion around the issue, but I think this is a good opportunity to give any anyone else on the commission or on the subcommittee an opportunity. And of course, we'll have an opportunity to discuss all of this uh, with the full commission at that next meeting as well. Um, but does anyone else have any questions about uh, the clarification that was done there? Uh, Commissioner Iona. So there was also the issue of internal affairs, or maybe maybe uh, Samir, Samir mentioned this and I just didn't catch it, but about uh, internal affairs, uh, taking uh, overseeing issues of non-sworn employees. Yeah, that, that is correct. That was also uh, noted in there. Um, and I, I can pull up the text from the directive if that's helpful. Okay, so would, would those then, if internal affairs went away, would those just be referred to human resources then? The, the way it's written now, it's not explicit either which way, but... I, and maybe it's just something we don't need to worry about, which would be fine with me. <laughs> Any other comments or questions for this section? Okay, Commissioner Casey, did you have something you wanted to add? Nope, it's just coming up video for the next section. Okay, excellent. Since there wasn't actual changes to this section, can we move on? Okay. All right, this is the section on other parts of the Portland Police Bureau. Um, the Oversight Board and Bureau will maintain a working relationship with the PPB Professional Standards Division, including staff working on the Employment Information System. Um, I think we cut the next line um, just because we considered it sort of extraneous. Um, the value of this relationship, I think, is sort of self-explanatory, um, and we didn't want to get into issues around um, what the role of the Employment Information System is, as that is something that may change or they may it may be something that uh is not necessary for us to outline in code as we are putting this forward um the next section we completely cut the section around the inspector general position um we are considering adding language somewhere um to clarify that there may need to be work done um in general between bureaus, including the police bureau, to clarify the roles and names of positions um, as things sort of overlap or potentially become confusing as this new board is set up. Um, but we did not want it to feel like we were singling out the inspector general 
um, as a particular thing that we thought um, needed to be changed in some way, um, when really we just wanted to make more generally a statement that um, we want to make sure that all of the language is clarified as new entities are formed um, and maybe taking on some of the names of things that already exist. Thank you, Commissioner Casey. Were there any other questions about um, this particular section or comment? Okay. Is there any strong opposition to the change that we see in front of us here? Is there a general agreement for this section? Okay. It looks like I I'm saw- Sorry, it was a little slow on the draw. Could you show yeah, that? Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. It's like I, I, I did actually see everybody's hands, including Commissioner um, Glenn and Commissioner Tirsa. So I think we're good. We can move, can we move on? Okay. I think we're good to move on to the next section. Okay, this is section A2. All right, so A2, this is the one that's probably seen the most changes. So everybody um, just please uh, feel free to jump in with your questions, comments and such. Um, and uh, yeah, let's get through it. So A2 is the impact of the oversight board implementation on city advisory entities. Many of the current advisory groups related to police and policing will not be directly impacted by the implementation of the oversight board. That section is unchanged. The city has already determined that two of the remaining advisory groups related to police and policing, the Police Accountability Commission itself and the Citizen Review Committee will sunset as part of oversight board implementation. That section is also unchanged. So can we move on from this particular part of the section, A2, A and B? Okay. C. And can we scroll up just a little bit? I have a little tab thing that hangs down into the very top of my screen. So I miss the first line when it's the top thing. Thank you very much. Um, so section C, um, this is one of the, this is language that was proposed by um, Commissioner Iona. Um, the Oversight Board and Bureau shall maintain a working relationship with other advisory committees related to police and policing. Representatives from the Oversight Board and other advisory committees will meet periodically in public to discuss emerging issues and policy concerns they have encountered in the course of their work. If meetings are not practical, at a minimum, they will share by email or other means information on those topics among themselves. This information will be reported back to members of the various advisory committees. They may choose to create joint study committees to research those issues and develop joint recommendations. Thank you. Okay, I was going to ask that. Wonderful. So for the whole section of C, first, are there any comments or questions, thoughts about this particular section? Okay. Is there any strong opposition to the change or to the proposed change of AC? Is there general agreement to the change as you see in front of you? Wonderful. I just need, thank you, Commissioner Tiersa. Okay, I think we have, some, uh, can we move on? Okay. We have consensus in that section, C. Section D, A, D. All right, so this is all new. D, framework for independent and voluntary incorporation. 
other advisory groups related to police and policing whose functions incorporate officer accountability and or policy recommendations may independently and voluntarily choose to pursue incorporation with the oversight board to provide themselves with increased independence, access to the board's investigatory and analytical resources, to avoid confusion from the public, and to be an efficient use of city resources in support of volunteers. One, this process would be initiated through mutual consent by the advisory group and the oversight board. Two, incorporation would include a guarantee of appointment as a board alternate and consideration by council of board membership for all members of the incorporated advisory group, which ensures continued full voting membership on the incorporated group. Three, incorporation would also include the maintenance of the incorporated group as a distinct and independent body for at least the length of one board term, three years. And four, other details would be developed between the incorporated group following their voluntary choice to pursue incorporation and the oversight board. Um, and one thing that I will just highlight for this because I know that it came up during our discussion last week um, is the incorporation of uh, members as board alternates. Um, I think that that was something that was viewed as sort of a, um, basically saying that members would be sort of lesser than as they were incorporated onto the board, which was certainly not our intention, though I can completely see why it was viewed that way. Um, the reason that it was actually implemented that way is that in order to be a full member of the board, you have to be appointed by city council, and so we can't bind them to that in this document. Um, and so basically what we wanted to do was say, at the very least, they have to be allowed to be a board alternate which would give them full voting power on the newly incorporated body, um, but that also um, city council should consider um, appointing them as a full board member. So that was never, never our intention to say that people who are coming on board should not be full board members. In fact, one of the reasons we wanted to implement this is to make it easier for people who want to serve on their existing uh, body, but also are interested in serving on the new board to be able to do so. So it's our hope that this language implements that intention. Any comments or questions about the new new language that is presented in front of you? Commissioner Iona. So I've been trying to, I mean, this is the first time I've seen this. So I'm trying to figure out though, I'm thinking, and I think about just the ones I have some familiarity with, and I'm gonna use the training advisory council as an example. So that group of people advises the police bureau's training division on training stuff related to the police. So if the training advisory council decided that they wanted to get folded into the oversight board, then I take it that means so the police bureau has still has authority over its own advisory groups. So they could just like create a new training advisory council um, with new people because they if they really feel they need a community of, of voice and their training practices, that would be something that they would want to do. So kind of talk that talk that through with me and explain how, you know, how how that kind of works. Thanks. So we have tried to design this in a way, and first of all, thank you for that comment and thank you generally. Um, this was something that you brought up in our last meeting too, and we tried to incorporate, and I think there is some of this is incorporated later into the document as well. Um, I think you are correct in that comment and in some of your previous comments that ultimately we cannot bind the Portland Police Bureau from creating whatever advisory councils it feels is necessary to inform its work, nor should we necessarily want to. Um, I think that what we're trying to do in this sort of iteration of the document is ultimately make it up to sort of those councils to say, you know, we think that it makes sense for us to go under the um, review board. And so we're going to, you know, take a vote as a full board um, and potentially inquire with them and figure out a way to do that. I think in the instance that you are sort of, say the instance of the training advisory council, I think that would probably go into their discussion of saying basically like, you know, do we think that being under the police bureau um, 
is a better fit for us? Do we think that it allows us to do our job better? Do we think that we need sort of that proximity versus the trade off of not necessarily having the independence of being under another entity? Um, and ultimately, if they did make that decision of like the work that we have been doing um, would work better under the oversight board, and they decided we want to go be a part of the oversight board, and the oversight board agreed to that, um, then there would be nothing stopping the police bureau from saying basically, well, we think that there is still value to having sort of a like interior training council, and we're going to constitute something like that. Um, I don't think that's likely because I think that an entity um, that has that relationship and that purpose is unlikely to sort of decide that they don't want to have that anymore. Um, so I think really what we've tried to do here is give them the flexibility to make the decision for themselves. And I think that this will um, be much more likely to apply to entities that are created sort of by um, city council or other city bodies. And that's why later on there is a section in which we say that um, in order to create more, um, in order to create additional police oversight um, committees or entities, uh, the city council and the mayor have to consult with the police oversight board first, but we don't put that same requirement on the police bureau um, because I think it's important to establish the um, oversight board um, having been sort of created by the voters of Portland um, to not be then layering on lots of other levels of oversight from the city itself. But I do think, as you've said, that it's important to allow the bureau to sort of create um, internal mechanisms, internal uh, ways for it to receive feedback at the same time. So I know that was sort of a long and rambling answer to your question, but we've we've really, I think, in the interceding week since that uh, since that uh, discussion we had last time, we've really taken some of your feedback to heart and tried to create a document that reflects it while at the same time still allowing for down the line, um, basically giving everyone as much agency as possible to be able to do what they think is appropriate in times that may look different in whatever direction than they do right now. Thank you so much. That sounds great, Casey. Thank you, Commissioner Casey. Thank you, Commissioner Iona, for your, your question. Are there any other questions or comments about this particular section of the document? Okay. Is there any strong opposition to the change to the text that we see in front of us currently? Is there general agreement to these changes to see a, a, yeah, thank you. Okay, can we move on? And I just wanna make sure that I'm saying the right thing because I know you we were in section D, but it was for A2, section D. I just wanna make sure, cause it's hard to tell we got, I got lost. Yeah, we're in A2 right now. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I was saying the right number. Thank you. Okay. And so now we're at A2E. All right. So A2E, after the oversight board has been implemented for at least three years, it may undertake a review of all advisory groups related to police and policing, including communicating directly and transparently with volunteers serving on those groups and may make recommendations to the mayor and or city council regarding how the different aspects of the current oversight system will function or cease to function, including how and when to wind down the current oversight systems. And so this gives the board a full term length of the first sort of set of members to sort of build these relationships, have conversations with these existing groups, um, and be able to sort of come to their own conclusions about kind of what the system should look like going forward um, before making these recommendations. And I will note that the reason why we included this specific language um, and really the reason why we included this section um, is that we are trying to be responsive 
to the mandate that city council has given us. And this is specific language that was included in the things that we were asked to do. Um, so that has been part of sort of this entire discussion around um, what to do with sort of the existing oversight system has been happening because we were asked to have that discussion by city hall um, and by city council. And we are hoping to build in a mechanism for that discussion to continue and ultimately do what city council has asked us to do, um, but giving it a longer timeline um, to build in more time for outreach discussion and frankly, just for this new board to be constituted and um, have an opportunity to get itself functioning and get its feet under it before it has to be having some of these discussions. Thank you, Commissioner Casey. Commissioner Iona. Sorry, I've got more questions. So if the new oversight board has, when it says implemented, I assume that means it's up and running for at least three years. Then when you go down to the part about the current oversight system, I'm assuming that means IPR. Um, but if the other thing is been working for three years, won't by then IPR be gone? So mostly gone. So at that point, IPR will be completely gone, I believe. Okay. Um, the current oversight systems language that we were given is not specific to IPR. Um, and it could apply to sort of anything that is considered an oversight system, which potentially includes some of the groups that we have been discussing over the past couple of meetings. And so really this gives the commission itself after it's been doing its work for three years, the um, the flexibility to do a holistic look at the whole system that existed before it and the parts of that system that has carried through and say, all right, are there any further recommendations that we want on making things more consolidated, more efficient um, in, you know, maybe recommending that some of these groups receive more resources or um, recommending that you know they have an opportunity to work out roles between them or frankly the way that this is drafted um, the oversight board could take a look at things and say you know we have considered how the different aspects of the system are functioning we've considered how and when to wind down the system and we've decided that everything is fine and we don't need to make any recommendations um, so so really it give it puts the the power in the hands of the board itself to decide what aspects of the remaining system need to be looked at and what do we want to, what changes do we want to recommend to them. Um, just want to double check about staff's hand. Yeah, not to uh, throw a complication in here, but just to and this is in no way um, disagreeing with either Commissioner Debbie or Co-Chair Casey, but there. Uh, the other subcommittee is technically figuring out how long IPR will still be around and that's not done yet. Um, and there are proposals that might get near to that length um, in, in total. So uh, that, that are hard to predict um, until at earliest this Thursday. So um, this is sort of a tangent to the question, but for those who are interested in how long IPR uh, would be maintained before it sunsets, that's something that uh, as early as this Thursday's subcommittee meeting could get figured out. Thank you. Apologies for stepping on the other subcommittee's toes. I certainly you know, I will wait to hear what, what is happening there before making any more statements about timelines. Okay. Any more questions or thoughts about section E? A to E. Okay, no more questions or comments. Is there any strong opposition to this proposed language? Is there general consensus to this proposed language? General agreement, I should say, excuse me. Okay, I think I see everybody. Okay. Um, can we move on to section F? A2F. Sorry, I can't see everybody. It keeps changing on me. 
Okay, thank you. Commissioner Casey. So A2F is unchanged. It just says that prior to establishing any new city new advisory groups related to police or policing, the mayor and or city council shall discuss the proposal with the oversight board and give sufficient time for a response. Um, so just to go into this one a little bit. First, uh, again, as I discussed in the previous section, um, I think this is acknowledges sort of the um, the fact that has been brought up by Commissioner Iona that we don't want to preclude the police bureau itself from creating advisory groups um, because we want to incentivize and encourage them to be trying to take community input and advice. Um, but at the same time, we don't want to have a situation where every time new city councilors are being elected, they're creating another new advisory group that is in accordance with whatever direction they want to go this way or that way, um, rather than trying to um, work through the existing system and um, sort of uh, empower the existing um, advisory group. I think that we've seen um, we have seen a lot of uh, police accountability systems come and go in Portland, and we are hoping that that will not be um, the case after this system is implemented. Um, but at the same time, uh, we don't preclude them from doing so. We just ask them to discuss it with the oversight board and give sufficient time for a response. So that acknowledges the fact that maybe there are circumstances that we can't foresee that will require another group being created. Um, but we at least think that it is appropriate for the current oversight board to have input in the creation of that. That's everything from me. Thank you, Commissioner Casey. Any thoughts? Just want to make sure. Okay, can we move on? Okay, thank you very much. We will actually move on to a break. Um, I'll have folks come back at 7.51. Um, thank you. Okay, welcome back. I see a show of hands that people are here. Or cameras all. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, I believe that we're gonna be going now to section A1. Am I right, Commissioner Casey? Oh. Uh, Commissioner Glenn, did you have a question? Oh, you're just showing your hand. Let me know you're back. Thank you. All right, well, that is correct. Okay, let's go. All right, so A1, um, general relationship with other parts of city government. This is another section that has not had any changes made to it. So if people could just read through it and then let us know if there's anything that they would like to propose.
Let me know when commissioners have finished reading. Okay. Um, can we move on from this section? Okay. Oh, is there an actual question from Commissioner Iona? Just want to make sure. Okay, great. Another another question. So I just was curious, and I think this is a question for staff, but what it's what's the prospects for getting uh having a meeting with the Bureau of Human Resources? I sort of feel like they're kind of a wild card in some of this because we don't really know exactly what they are able to do. Uh, staff? Uh, yeah, haven't heard anything new since last Thursday. So, um, but basically trying to figure out which part of HR is is the best, the Bureau of Human Resources, the best part to speak to us as it you know relates to employment, uh, collective bargaining, several other sections, and and the bureau has several parts. So um, we've been kind of trying to figure that out and then schedule it after that. But definitely still uh, intending to make it happen. And, and fairly confident that it will happen, just not specifically confident in a specific date yet. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Iano. Any other questions about this section? Okay, can we move on? Okay, wonderful. All right, thank you. Um, staff can move on. Okay, this is section A1D. So this is what, pardon me, this is what we were discussing earlier when we took out the section on the potential renaming of the inspector general position. Um, we decided to instead have this sort of more clearly holistic language, which is the oversight board shall maintain a working relationship with other parts of the city government and work with those entities to ensure there is no duplication of names and titles, processes, and terminology. This process shall seek to avoid confusion and create clarity for the community. Any questions or comments about this proposed changed language? Okay, so no hand on that. Okay. Is there any strong opposition to the proposed changed language? Okay. Is there general agreement to the proposed changed language or the proposed language? Okay, I saw all kinds of happy hands. Can we move on from this section then? Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. So we're wanted finished to, with just wanted to just flag we're trying to get uh a member back in the the oh the oh okay just bear with us a moment please yes oh Okay, great. Good. I thought I had saw her and then she did disappear. So I will ask again just to make sure that everybody um, uh, Commissioner Lynn. Okay, so that was a, that was a yes. Am, am I assuming it's correct? I want to make sure. Okay, fabulous. Thank you. Okay, we can move on. And this is the introduction. So the only section left is the introduction. Um, I don't believe that there have been changes to this, but I do want to make sure that everyone has a chance to revisit it. Um, this is going to be what frames sort of all of the other work that we have done on this section. Um, and so please go ahead and read over this and uh, let me know if there are any changes you would like to make based on all of the other discussion that we've had around the document.
Has everyone read the introduction? No? Oh, yes, yes. Um, and we move on. Or has there any questions first? Okay, can we move on from this section? Fantastic. Okay. I believe we have we have one more, I believe, staff. Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a question in the Q and A, and then a proposed change. I think it's down in C three. Just gonna get down here. Yeah. So, um, just to read into the record, um, the question was: Will the new body report disciplinary action to the DPSST, which is the Oregon Department of Public Safety Standards and Training, or does that responsibility still fall to the PPD? And uh, then there's a proposed change here from uh, Co-Chair Casey, which I, yeah, thanks. Yes. So first of all, just in case we have anyone who is tuning in who is not familiar with the Department of Public Safety Standards and Training, they are both the entity that is responsible for training all law enforcement um, in the state of Oregon. So they actually run the training academy down in Salem that law enforcement members go to. Um, and they're also the entity that is responsible for certifying law enforcement in um, the state of Oregon. So if someone who is in law enforcement gets in trouble, there is the potential disciplinary ramifications, there are potential legal ramifications, but then there's also the possibility of looting, losing their certification under the Department of Public Safety Standards and Training and potentially not being able to continue to practice as a law enforcement person in the state of Oregon. So the language that I have proposed mirrors a lot of the other language that we have used um, in this document. And it says the Oversight Board and Bureau shall also maintain a working relationship with the Department of Public Safety Standards and Training, DPSST, including sharing information about cases in which officers were found to have committed misconduct and cases in which a finding of training failure was reached. This relationship shall benefit the community by promoting improvement in training and performance of officers. So that is entirely new. So if anybody has any comments, now is the time. Any comments or questions, thoughts? Just want to make sure everyone has read for themselves. Is there any strong opposition to this proposed language? Is there a general consensus or agreement to this proposed language? Okay, can we move on? All right, now we are done with this particular document, or at least at least this portion of the document. <laughs> Wonderful, yay. Okay, so we can go into the next section of our agenda. That's okay with the commission. Yes, oh, okay. I have to get permission from y'all. This is your, this is your party. This is... <laughs> okay, wonderful. Uh, give me just one second. Okay. The subcommittee has completed discussion on this document and the next agenda is discussing whether the subcommittee should refer the document to the full commission. With all the changes made today, incorporate it into text. This is a potential agreement document that was circulated that gives some context as to this decision. It, it also says that co-chairs and staff would be authorized to fix some formatting and typos prior to the full commission's consideration. I think we need to go to the next slide, yep. 
before seeing if there is consensus around referring this document, we're going to hear, oh, we already, did we already, we already reviewed values and goals, right? Yes? No, I can't really. Well, no, we'll just do that. We're gonna review values and goals and hear, and also hear from the public, which is what we definitely need to do. After that, we'll ask members to make a final tweet, any final tweaks, then if they're ready to make a, ready to make a decision, I'll pass it to staff to review values and goals again. Okay. Sorry, Sorry. That, <laughs> just <laughs> the, the audio cut out when it was coming and it got a little jumpy there. Your values and goals again, is that what you're saying? Yeah, and the screen kept doing all kinds of dancing things on my side. So my apologies, I, I couldn't see what everybody was doing. And yes, we need values and goals. We did it the first time already. So this is the second time, I believe. Yep, happy to show it. And then we need to take public comment for this particular section. I think we can scroll up a little more. And a little bit more. Okay, I think if the commission is ready. A show of hands. Wonderful, thank you so much. I believe we need to go to public comment before referring on the draft agreement. So public comment, we ask if folks are interested in speaking up that they do so now at this time. Um, three minutes is the time limit. Please use a show of hands. Thank you very much. I believe I see in Nathan. Let's see, who do I got here? All right, uh, we'll start with Thank you, Nathan Castle. Thank you. And we'd love to hear your comment. 
Thanks. Hi, everyone. Uh, Nathan Castle, he, him pronouns. Um, I'm a member of PSEP and TAC, uh, but I'm here uh, today on my own, uh, you know, speaking uh, for myself only. Um, I do want to say thank you uh, to the uh, subcommittee members for the uh, quick turnaround on changes to the draft. Um, I had some concerns about the language on, um, you know, the impact on other advisory committees and other groups uh, last week, um, but I'm uh, really liking the language that I'm, I'm seeing now, um, keeping it open to um, voluntary uh, incorporation uh, as groups see fit. Um, so thank you for those changes. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to comment on, and I, I don't know um, how this happened, but um, I was a little surprised by the meeting uh, being moved up a half an hour today. Um, I was expecting it to be uh, seven o'clock, which is what I saw on the website. Um, I want to say as late as this Sunday this week. So, um, yeah, I guess I just have to object to that because I, I very nearly missed uh, this very exciting meeting that I was looking forward to for a whole week. Um, thank you. Thank you for your comment, Nathan Castle. And we'll go on to uh, Dan Handelman. Uh, good evening, everybody. This is uh, Dan Handelman. I use he, him pronouns. I'm a fellow commissioner on this commission, and I appreciate being able to attend these meetings and all the work you're doing. I'm going to preface what I'm saying by saying I really want you to vote on this document tonight and pass it on to the full commission. And so some of the things I'm going to say are mostly to put them on the record, the hope that the co-chairs will put them into little comment bubbles to pass on to the full commission and not for you to necessarily uh, revisit everything tonight. Um, uh, and, you know, I actually use the term sandbag in my little notes here saying, I don't want, you know, I don't want you to be felt sandbagged when we get to the full commission because I've said some of these things before in other ways. Okay, so um, my two things I think you might want to revisit are an A1D um, where uh, you said there should be no overlap in the titles of jobs. If somebody's called an investigator somewhere else in the city, I think it's going to be very hard not to call them investigators in the board and elsewhere. So I'd say no, um, you know, to, to, to assure only minimal overlap or something like that. Um, and then in the last section that just came up, I don't have the section number because it's new with the DPSST part. I would say report to the state as appropriate because um, uh, it's up to the employer, I think, to do that. But there's going to be a lot of questions about what the board's role in all, is in all that. And I think it's okay for the board to uh, duplicate effort, but I want to make sure that we don't step on toes once again. Um, so here are the comments I think that I'd like to see just thought about um, before the commission votes on it. Um, if you're talking about having the entirety of another advisory body come in under the umbrella of the board, does that mean their staff is going to come in too to help manage that? Because I hope so, because otherwise it's going to be a lot more for the staff of the oversight board to deal with. When you're saying they're gonna come in and automatically be called alternates, how does that affect other people who have to apply and go through um, screening in order to become alternates? Alternates also are supposed to be trained in how to review case files so they can become full members at some point. So I think especially offering that the, <laughs> the existing bodies will still have the right to vote in their own bodies creates a lot of confusion, and I think it's something that just needs to be better thought out. My proposal last time was just to see that if these other advisory boards stop doing work because the new board exists, that then uh, as if the board is able to pick up those functions, the board should pick up those functions, not to actually absorb the people and the entire um, body. So just think about that. And Commissioner... Um, uh, the arbitration section, um, there's, a, there's something written time. out. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, uh, time. Arbitration and um, sunsetting IA are the other things I wanted to bring up. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Handelman. Thank you for all of your comments. We appreciate hearing from our public and our commissioners that are sitting out in the public. If there isn't anyone else, um, we will move forward. Next steps, I believe I'll be passing this on to staff. Uh, we're not, we have to ask. We're, oh, wait, sorry, we need to back up, back up, back up, because we have a thing to like complete. 
it's Mari. And I got thrown off by the, the slide in front of me. I was like, wait, really? <laughs> okay. All right. All right, we did that. We did that. Okay, would any of the members of the subcommittee like to revisit any portion of the draft agreement before moving forward? Commissioner Ayanna. I'm not suggesting we re, re, we revisit it, but I um, I do think we really should make space for the full commission to give some more thought to this, the, the issue of, you know, this voluntary process for advisory committees possibly getting folded. And I'm not sure that we really have, that we've had a, enough opportunity to really think through how that might work. I mean, really, again, as Commissioner Handelman pointed out, like if you all of a sudden you're moving the PCCP into the oversight board, so that's 13 people. So I, I just, yeah, I guess I, I don't get it. Would they be, well, we just have a whole lot of alternates and I, I think, yeah, let's make sure we have time to talk about that when we get to the full commission. I definitely agree with Commissioner Hamilton. I think it'd be excellent if we could vote on this tonight. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Iona. Anyone else have any thing they would like to revisit before we move on to completing this document? Okay. So I'm going to ask the questions. Is there any strong opposition to referring the, doc, the draft areas of agreement to the full, full PAC for their consideration? Is there general agreement around referring the draft areas of agreements to the full PAC? for their consideration. All right. Okay. I believe we have consensus. Thank you. Uh, I just wanna make sure I'm writing, reading everything. Okay. There is consensus and this has been referred. Thank you for your hard work. Okay. Thank you, Casey. Thank you all. Okay, let's see. Okay, I guess. Now, now we're going to go to next steps, and I'm going to be passing it over to Kate, uh, Commissioner KC. Pardon me, I just took a big bite of my. I mean, of course, he did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm just up. Oh, there go my notes. Okay, so I'm gonna. Freestyle this one. Next steps. We have uh, we have concluded our work on approving this draft areas of agreement document, which means that we have concluded our work as a subcommittee. Congratulations, everyone. Our next step is going to be referring this document to the full commission. So we'll be meeting with all of our compatriots at the next meeting, um, having an opportunity to incorporate any of their feedback into this, and then meeting our our schedule for getting this thing done getting it incorporated into our larger work product and getting one step closer to building the thing we've all been working on so good job everyone um it continues to be a pleasure thank you commissioner casey all right we will go to the garden plot this is a time for facilitators co-chairs and staff to summarize any items already brought up today, which did not fit in today's, today's agenda. 
We'll recap those items here and use them in developing future agendas. We won't, we won't be using this time to add new items, not previously mentioned or to discuss any items, but we will, be, but we will use this time to develop future agendas so these items can be addressed. Is there any uh, items on the garden plot for the second facilitator? Uh, no, I have Thank yeah. you. Wonderful. Um, Co-chairs, anything for you? Nothing to add on my end now. Okay, and staff. Um, this isn't new. It was mentioned last time, but just in case anyone was watching and wasn't sure why uh, there were these yellow highlighted sections and why there was a comment off of it um, in the document. The yellow highlight is the exact text from a previously approved PAC document, and it was previously put into the garden plot by, by co-chairs that where it says employees and elected officials, they wanted to revisit potentially adding appointed officials. So just wanted to flag that in case anyone was watching this meeting who didn't watch the last one. Um, and I guess while I have the floor, just thank you to co-chairs uh, Casey and Seema, and, and thank you to all the members and congratulations as well. Thanks. Yay. Okay. Yay. All right. So this brings us to our end of our meeting. As a reminder, you can now submit advanced public comment to the Police Accountability Commission via web form, voicemail, or postmail, postal mail. And you can see those lovely items on the screen in front of you. Thank you all to, thank you to all members who attended today's meeting and thank you for your contributions today. Thank you for the interpreters and your contributions today. Finally, thank you to the members of the community for attending and contributing your thoughts and questions and feedback. If you are not already signed up for email updates, please also sign up to receive updates from the PAC. You can do that at tinyurl.com PAC public comments. This is the final meeting of the subcommittee on broader systems. Thank you all for your work. The next meeting of the full commission is Thursday, June 29th from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. The next meeting of the subcommittee of not, nope, 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 not the subcommittee. We're done here. Um, thank you and uh, have a good night.